Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chemicals from C4 Compounds. We have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in previous couple of lecture in this particular chapter. In this chapter we started discussing on production of different types of uh, synthetic chemicals from C3 and C4 compounds. C3 compounds in the sense the uh, raw material whichever we have taken that should be having 3 carbon atoms. C4 in the sense the raw material whatever we have taken that must be having 4 carbon atoms. right? So, uh, under the category of C3 compounds we have considered the uh, propylene because this is the one which is produced at the at almost like 50 percent rate of whatever the rate ethylene is produced in steam cracking of hydrocarbons as well as the other processes. right? So, actually uh, propylene is also produced along with the ethylene and acetylene in the same process of uh, uh, steam cracking of hydrocarbons that is what we have seen not only ethylene, acetylene, propylene, but also propane, butane, uh, butylene. Uh, butadiene etc. these kind of uh, products are also produced when we do the steam cracking of uh, you know hydrocarbons that is what we have seen. The same thing we have seen twice actually we have seen in the complex flow charts uh, part when we started discussing the petroleum industry as well as the in the previous chapter where we were discussing the chemicals uh, production from C1 and C2 compounds. So, there for the production of ethylene and acetylene because under the C2 uh, compounds category we have co considered the ethylene and acetylene and then uh, how to produce this ethylene and acetylene uh, from the uh, uh, resources like you know uh, you know hydrocarbons like naphtha etc that is what we have seen so there we have discussed the steam cracking of hydrocarbons to produce ethylene acetylene and in the same process we also got the propylene and then from the applications point of view what we have ethylene is the one which is having the huge number of applications. Out of the all olefins ethylene is the most important one because of such applications, huge number of applications. Applications in the sense you can produce large number of intermediates and then end chemicals from uh, ethylene. right? After the ethylene propylene is the such uh, important component because from the propylene also you can produce large number of uh, intermediate as well as the end chemicals. So, under the category of uh, olefins first we uh, taken the ethylene now then we started discussing about the propylene and then uh, compounds derived from the propylene. right? So, that uh, we realized the importance of propylene uh, through the uh, consumption pattern where we have seen from the propylene we can produce huge number of uh, uh, synthetic chemicals out of which we have uh, selectively considered uh, 8 uh, different types of uh, synthetic chemicals and then we have discussed their production process. They include synthetic glycerol or glycerin, isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol, acetone, cumin, acrylonitrile, isoprene propylene oxide and butanol from propylene by oxo process. For all of these chemicals we discussed their uh, pertinent properties, we discussed the methods of production of such chemicals and then selectively we have taken a uh, one or two methods and then we discussed corresponding chemical reactions of uh, such methods, then we discuss the process through flow chart and then engineering problems and end uses. Right? This is what we have discussed uh, in the previous couple of lecture in this particular chapter. Now, we will be discussing the production of uh, different types of synthetic chemicals from C4 compounds. C4 compounds in the sense butanes or butylenes are both. Okay? So, here uh, first we have a pictorial representation of uh, what kind of chemicals, synthetic chemicals you can produce from the butane or butylenes. Right? So, then we have option of butylene epoxide which can be further converted to, converted to the butanol amines. You can produce butadiene which is largely used for the plastics and rubbers especially in SBR that is uh, styrene butadiene rubber in that one it is primarily used. Okay? 
It is also used for other kind of robust manufacturing as well which we will be discussing in polymerization industry chapter as well as the rubber industry chapter which we will be discussing subsequently. Then we can also produce butanol from uh, these C4 compounds. These butanols primarily used as solvents or uh, to produce butyl acetate, methyl ethyl ketone. Now what you can understand from this uh, uh, chart that you know compared to the chemicals that you can produce from C2 and then C3 compounds, less number of chemicals are being produced from C4 compounds. That is the reason most of the importance were also given for the production of different types of chemicals from C2 and uh, C3 compounds of olefin category that is ethylene and then propylene respectively. Now in this lecture primarily we will be discussing production of butadiene by different processes and then conclude this particular chapter. Butadiene, it is nothing but CH2 double bond CH, CH double bond CH2, right. First we will have a pertinent properties of a butadiene, molecular weight is 54.09, melting point is minus 108.9 degree centigrade, boiling point is minus 4.41 degree centigrade, density at 20 degree centigrade is 0.621 gram per cc, explosive limits lower and upper limits are 2 and 11.5 percent respectively whereas toxic limit is 5000 ppm. It is soluble in alcohols and then ether but not soluble in water that is the reason it is mostly used to make a rubber. Consumption pattern only marketable use of this particular uh, butadiene is in the manufacturing of a uh, synthetic rubber especially SBR, styrene butadiene rubber. Production of this SBR also we are going to discuss uh, in the last chapter of the course which is on rubber industry, okay. Uh, whereas the production of other uh, monomer styrene we will be discussing in the polymerization chapter of the particular course, okay. Methods of production, many methods are available uh, but however four important commercial methods are shown here. First one is the dehydrogenation of butane, Hodri process. Second one is the dehydrogenation of butylene. Third one is the dehydrogenation and dehydration of ethanol. Fourth one is the steam cracking of hydrocarbons. Remember when we were uh, discussing uh, the production of uh, ethylene and ethylene uh, from hydrocarbons, we have done the steam cracking of uh, hydrocarbons and then we got that pro uh, you know ethylene and ethylene. Along with the ethylene ethylene, so many other uh, uh, you know products were also produced like propylene, propane, butylene, butane, uh, some aromatics etc. In there we also got butadiene also. So the same process may be optimized or uh, tuned such a way that more of the butadiene can be produced, okay. So that is one of the process which we have already discussed so then uh, we are not going to discuss this one. Whereas this dehydrogenation of butane process is very much famous in USA because it is more economic and then if you want high yield then also it is better to go for this process. But that depends on how much resources are you having the, uh, the, for this butane that is also makes difference. If you do not have uh, butane resource then you cannot do the dehydrogenation to produce the lot of butadiene because butane is also having other applications. Right. Next one is that in India mostly uh, we use this uh, dehydrogenation, dehydration of ethanol. This process we particularly use in India because of a lack of resources of butane. But ethanol we have lot of uh, natural ethanol by fermentation industry by corn fermentation you get lot of ethanol. So that ethanol you can take and do the dehydrogenation to get the acetaldehyde then react that acetaldehyde with excess of ethanol to get the butadiene, okay. So this process also we are going to discuss. So these two processes we are going to discuss in addition to this one there is another process oxy dehydrogenation of butane to get the uh, butadiene. So that third process also we are going to discuss in this particular lecture, okay. So let us start discussion on production of butadiene by dehydrogenation of butane. If you see the chemical reactions, main reaction is that this uh, butane whatever is there that reversibly undergoes to produce butadiene by dehydrogenation reaction releasing hydrogen and then it is endothermic reaction, 
okay. This is the main reaction and then it is reversible reaction. So, the conditions you have to make such a way that this reaction moves forward in the positive direction or right side direction so that you can produce butadiene. Otherwise, reversible reaction takes place and then you may get the butane also, okay. So, that is one important thing and then lot of energy is required because it is endothermic reaction and then how to get that energy also is very important to see that we discuss in flow chart. Side reaction this uh, butane would also be producing N butylene C4 H8 by the same dehydrogenation reaction. So, when you do the dehydrogenation of butanes, so not only the butadiene you will also get the N butylene as well because when you do the dehydrogenation both of them are being produced. And then the main reaction if you do not control towards the positive or right side direction you may also have the uh, butane production from the butadiene because of the reversible reaction. Quantitative requirements, if you wanted to produce 1 ton of butadiene having more than 98 percent purity and 60 percent yield, only raw material that you require is 1.8 tons because you are doing the dehydrogenation of butane and then for that you need 1.8 tons of butane to produce 1 ton of butadiene of having more than 98 percent purity. There would also be byproducts like you know butylene and then other kind of products as we are going to see in the flow chart, they would be approximately 0.65 tons. Capacity of the plant is usually 100 to 200 tons per day. So, this is the flow chart, we will first discuss how to get the butadiene by doing the dehydrogenation of butane. So, for this process what you take? You take C4 and C5 cut of uh, refinery stream primarily having butane and then slightly small amount of uh, isopentane would also be there that you cannot avoid otherwise you know lot of uh, energy and money you may be supplying to purify this raw material itself, so which is not required. So, if you have a, uh, a refinery cut fraction which is largely having butane is good enough. That mixture should be preheated using the flue gas. So, not only that particular mixture, there, there are also some kind of recycled gases, right. They will also be mixed with the feed fraction and then they will be preheated to the required temperature of something like 650 degree centigrade. So, that is the temperature required for the uh, dehydrogenation of uh, um, N butane to take place, but such high temperature you may not get by the preheating itself. So, you may get around 250 to 300 degree centigrade temperature by preheating. That preheated uh, feed you take to the reactor system. This reactor system is having a cycle of adiabatic cycle of a make period which is taking place in one reactor and another reactor is the regeneration period, right. So, that is taking place in the second reactor. In the make period, uh, the time is approximately 5 to 15 minutes. Within this 5 to 15 minutes, whatever the preheated uh, uh, reactant and recycled gases are there, they will be undergoing the dehydrogenation and then you get the butadiene produced, okay. So, here uh, in this reactor, the catalyst required is the chromic oxide supported on porous alumina. Right. So, that catalyst you use and then in the reaction the temperature required is uh, 650 degree centigrade and in the reactor required temperature of 650 degree centigrade should be maintained. For that purpose what you do? You supply the preheated air or the steam again that is also possible, right. So, after 15 minutes of makeup period what happens? Regeneration period takes place. What do you mean by regeneration? During the make period some of the carbonaceous material would be deposited on the catalyst surface. So, that catalyst has to be regenerated. So, that catalyst would be heated up with a preheated air which is at approximately 400 degree centigrade. So, that what happens whatever the carbonaceous material deposited on the catalyst surface is there that would be combusted off. So, when this combustion of the carbonaceous material deposited on the catalyst surface takes place, lot of energy would be uh, evolved and that energy would be utilized to, to maintain the required temperature of 650 degree centigrade in the reactor to have the 
make period taking place periodically, right? So, 5 to 15 minutes you do the uh, make period where the reaction undergoes and then after 15 minutes another 10 minutes what you do? You do the uh, regeneration of the catalyst and then this cycle continues until the required yield of the you know butadiene you, you get it, right? So, here after utilizing the energy released by the combustion of carbonaceous material that was deposited on the catalyst surface that is most of that energy is utilized by the make period for the uh, you know dehydrogenation of N butane to take place on chromic oxide supported on alumina catalyst. But still some energy would be uh, may also be uh, there. So, that would be taken to the waste heat boiler to produce steam and then utilize for the other uh, heating purposes of the system. Right? So, after this uh, uh, cycle of uh, makeup and regeneration cycle, whatever the products are there, through the ejector you take to the quench tower, right? then you compress the products, cool them and then you take to the absorption tower where absorption is done using the light oil. Usually naphtha fractions are used uh, as light oil for the absorption purpose here. So, where you release the flue gas and then you can reuse them for a preheating purpose of the reactants, right? After the absorption you do the required stripping and then after the stripping you take the mixture to the butadiene tower where whatever the heavy ends are there you collect from the bottom of the tower, temperature and pressure of the tower are maintained such a way that most of the or almost all heavy ends are collected from the bottom. From the top you get butadiene but which is still crude, it is not purified, right? So, in order to make the purity of this crude uh, butadiene or in order to increase the purity of this butadiene to 98 to 99 percent, different options are there. That is in uh, the one of the option is the absorption in uh, cuprous ammonium estate solution, then uh, extractive distillation using furfural and then azeotropic distillation using ammonia, any of these three methods may be used. So, let us say if you use the absorption process which is the best one, right? So, uh, here this uh, crude butadiene is mixed with the absorption solution of uh, cuprous ammonium acetate in a mixer to which ammonia is also being supplied, right? While the absorption is taking place in this uh, tower, in this settler, what will happen? You know, some of the gases would also be released and then they would be recycled back to the uh, preheater along with the reactants, right? The liquids from the uh, mixer would be taken to stripper followed by butadiene uh, purifier so that to get the 99 more than 98 percent butadiene as a top product from the butadiene uh, purifier. Whereas, from the bottom of the stripper as well as the bottom of the butadiene purifier you may get the ammonia that you can recycle back to the mixer settler, right? along with the CA so that the required uh, absorption of impurities take place in the CA solution, fine. Then this ammonia whatever is there that you can directly recycle back to the mixer settler or you can take it to the ammonia still and then make it anhydrous ammonia by removing the water from the bottom of the ammonia still and then from the top anhydrous pure ammonia you can get that also you can recycle, both the option can be done, okay? Process description, feed of a refinery gas containing C4 to C5 cut majorly N-butane with some isopentane is mixed with recycle gas. Then mixture is preheated to reaction temperature prior to contact with catalyst in a fixed bed a regenerative heating reactor system. In this system a pair of reactors form an adiabatic cycle of make period and regeneration period. Make period of 5 to 15 minutes requiring the temperature of uh, 650 degrees centigrade. So, at the beginning of the make period the required temperature of 650 degrees centigrade should be there, but as the make period uh, progressively most uh, increases like towards the 15 minutes then temperature decreases to 550 degrees centigrade, 
right. This temperature is supplied by combustion of a carbon deposit on catalyst during regenerative period. At the start of make period, temperature of uh, reaction is 650 degrees centigrade and it drops to 550 degrees centigrade by the end make period and before switching to regeneration, okay. Pressure is low 120 to 150 mm absolute to force the reaction to the right. So, this is one of the important thing because we wanted the reaction to uh, progress towards the positive direction or right direction. For that you need to maintain the low pressure. Product gases are oil quenched, compressed, cooled and separated from lightens. This separation is done by absorption in naphtha followed by stripping. Overhead is fractionated to yield crude butadiene at the top which is purified by any of the following approaches. Absorption using cuprous ammonium acetate, extractive distillation with perforol or azeotropic distillation with ammonia, any of the three methods can be utilized. However, absorption is more common involving contact of close boiling butadiene butane fraction with lean cuprous ammonium acetate solution which dissolves butadiene. The solution is selected because in this solution actually uh, butadiene is dissolved in more percentages compared to the butylenes. So, whatever the butylene impurities are also there along with the uh, uh, butane, uh, unreacted butane etc., they will be less uh, dissolvable in these cuprous ammonium estate uh, solution. So, most of the butadiene will get into the uh, this solution, cuprous ammonium estate solution and then after that what you do? You do the stripping of this uh, butadiene from the uh, solution and then recycle the solution and then when whatever the butadiene that you get that you can utilize for the further purification under the butadiene purification uh, section of uh, distillation. Using the butadiene uh, column you can further purify the butadiene per percentage and then increase it to the 98 or more percentage. Desorption step at higher temperature is followed by distillation, compression and liquefaction of butadiene to give 98 to 99 percent purity of product, okay. So, this we have already discussed in the flowchart. Ammonia is recovered in distillation tower by water addition then separated as substantially anhydrous ammonia by fractionation. So, that ammonia solution itself you can uh, recycle or what you can do? You can you can purify the uh, ammonia solution to get the anhydrous ammonia and then you recycle it back to the mixer settler column. Major engineering problems of this particular method are provided here. The reactor design is one of the important thing because here you have to make sure that make period and then regeneration period, okay. Dual step adiabatic system operates with walls power operated on a preset cycle time which programs the reaction, purging and regeneration steps. So, most of them are automated in general. Hydrocarbons are purged from make reactor prior to the regeneration with combustion gases swept out just after the regeneration. Reactors are horizontal steel shell construction lined with ceramic monolith coating or tiles. Space velocity is that is you know uh, maintained in the process is 1.3 normal cubic meters of gas charge to the reactor per meter cube of catalyst per hour. Catalyst pellet bed is shallow to avoid excessive pressure drop. Conversion of 11 to 12 percent only per pass is usual operating figure that is the reason lot of recycling is required here. Catalyst development, chromic oxide impregnated on porous activated alumina is used. Coke deposits at the end of cycle are burned off with the preheated air and then whatever the energy uh, released because of the combustion that would be uh, utilized for to maintain the temperature in the make period reactor. Inert material of high capacity is mixed with catalyst to provide desired heat capacity during the make period. Catalyst life is approximately 2 years and which is very quite common. Effect of feed gas composition. Isopentane can be converted to isoprene with the same ultimate yield as C4 homologue of approximately 60 percent. 
Additional fractionating tower is required, but this process lends itself quite well to coproducts to butadiene and isoprene. And effect of pressure, dehydrogenation produces two additional moles of gas for each mole of reactant. So, the forward reaction is favored by the low pressure. So, that is the reason 120 to 150 mm absolute pressure is maintained. This pressure can be maintained by steam ejector operating from waste heat steam boiler or by a liquid quench oil jet ejector. Okay. Last important engineering problem is the purification of butadiene because in the mixture so many other components like butylenes, unreacted butane uh, and then because of the absorption some kind of naphtha and so many things are there. So, we have seen after the reaction the purification for the purification so many unit operations are involved in the flow chart. So, purification of butadiene uh, from the reaction mixture is also very important part, in fact very important engineering problem. Crude butadiene contains close boiling hydrocarbons which cannot be separated by ordinary fractionation for that reason you have to go either extractive distillation or azeotropic distillation. Use of polar reagents such as uh, cuprous ammonium estate markedly alters solubility and volatility of butadiene. This is due to the complex formation by CAA as compared to mono olefins. For example, butadiene is several times more soluble in this particular uh, cuprous ammonium estate uh, reagent than the butene. So, butenes will be dissolved very less. So, after the absorption in the solution primarily you will be having butadiene which you can release by stripping after the absorption unit. These butenes impurities must be removed as they act as chain termination agents in any addition type polymerization process. Because the purpose of uh, butadiene that uh, we are producing so that to do the polymerization, right. So, uh, this polymerization can be effective if the butadiene is uh, as much pure as possible or very high purity is required. In fact, high purity is required rather saying as much as purity, right. So, if the butenes are present along with this butadiene, they will be leading to chain termination reactions. In polymerization, you want chain to propagate not to terminate, okay. So, that is all about the production of a butadiene by dehydrogenation of butane. But now with little modification same process we discuss once again that is butadiene production by oxo dehydrogenation process. So, that means you know uh, we have to see the reaction again. So, whatever this uh, butane is there that undergoes reversibly to butadiene by dehydrogenation reaction releasing hydrogen here, right. Now, this reaction has to move forward positive direction, right direction then only it is better, but that is not easy. For that purpose you are maintaining low pressure and then in order to maintain the low pressure you are using ejectors etc. So, your equipment cost and all that increasing. But there is another alternative, if you add excess oxygen to the reactants then what happens this reaction moves forward in the positive direction. So, that is what the principle of uh, this particular process and then that is what the name also modified as oxy dehydrogenation process rather just dehydrogenation process. Since above reaction is reversible, its equilibrium can be shifted too far to right by adding enough oxygen to reacting mixture whatever the butane, isopentane and recycle gas mixture is there to that if you add enough oxygen then this reaction moves towards the right and increases conversion from roughly 20 percent to nearly 100 percent. In the dehydrogenation process the conversion was very less that is the reason we had several time recycling and all that. But here by simply adding oxygen to the reactant mixtures not only the reaction progresses more towards the right but also increases conversion to nearly 100 percent. Such good is the advantage of this process. This oxy dehydrogenation process is based on the above principle. Chemical reaction if you see now simply in the left hand side you are also adding oxygen. To the uh, butane you are adding oxygen to get the butadiene product 
plus water rather getting the H2 you are getting now water H2O. Okay. Flow chart shown in next slide shows decrease in plant size for equipment capacity and it is made possible by adding oxygen to dehydrogenation process. You know previous flow chart on dehydrogenation of butane we have seen after the reaction so many steps are required to do the purification and all that. Now here just by adding oxygen to the reactant mixture you can see the plant size has substantially decreased by uh, comparison in this particular flow chart. Right? So, here this is the flow chart not only for oxy uh, dehydrogenation uh, process but also a comparison is shown with the conventional uh, dehydrogenation process as well. Right? So, let us say uh, in the conventional process what you take uh, what you do or what we have done in just concluded uh, topic we have taken butane and then preheated it uh, by using preheat furnace and then passed it through reactors uh, having adiabatic cycle of make period and regeneration uh, period using reactors dehydrogenation reactors there you have online programming purging regeneration all these steps are there right and then after that this quenching absorption stripping uh, uh, are there and then this butadiene extraction are there. right? But now along with the butane if you also add oxygen plus some promoters like uh, bromine or iodine to the reactor. So, now butane you are preheating and then supplying to the oxy dehydrogenation reactor and then to that reactor you also supply the oxygen along with some promoters like bromine and iodine halogens. Then what happens directly you get the butadiene of sufficient purity with high conversion right? and then that can be directly uh, done uh, quenched to reduce the temperature of the product mixture then do the absorption in CAA and then stripping and then finally you know do the depropanizer if at all uh, you know some propanes are formed and then finally you get the butadiene product right so now whatever these steps required in the conventional dehydrogenation reactors process is not required in this process and then whatever this butadiene extraction liquefaction etc that we have done that is also not required in the oxy dehydrogenation process. So, what you can understand that the plant size also re, uh, sufficiently reduced by this oxy dehydrogenation process. So, obviously your capital cost is decreased as well as your maintenance operational cost would also be decreased because you may also be giving some funds to maintain and then operate these additional uh, you know uh, unit operations which are not required in the case of oxy dehydrogenation process. Okay. So, this is a comparison between the dehydrogenation of butane and then oxy dehydrogenation of butane processes. Process description of uh, oxy dehydrogenation of butane process is provided here. Butanes or butenes are fed with a carefully controlled amount of oxygen that is essential. This oxygen is mixed together with a small amount of a halogen either bromine or iodine promoter. This mixture is introduced into a reactor containing heterogeneous catalyst. Higher yields simplify the subsequent product separation step greatly as shown in the comparison flow chart because the yield is higher so then purification steps are not complicated or a little a fewer number of uh, equipment or unit operations are required for the separation of butadiene from the reaction product mixture. Now, we discussed the third process uh, that is production of uh, butadiene from ethanol which is primarily used in India. Here we have two steps ethanol first you have to do the dehydrogenation to get the acetaldehyde then that acetaldehyde will react with the excess ethanol to undergo dehydration step to produce butadiene. So, those reactions if you see first is dehydrogenation of ethanol to produce acetaldehyde. Second reaction is the dehydration of ethanol where ethanol or excess ethanol reacting with the 
so called just now produced uh, acetaldehyde to produce butadiene and then water. Okay. Quantitative requirements, if you wanted to produce 1 ton of butadiene more than 98 percent purity, 70 percent yield, then ethanol requirement is 2.88 tons. This is the only you know reactant that is there. Okay. And then this is undergoing dehydrogenation and dehydration reactions to get the butadiene. Byproducts ethylene, butane, ethyl ether, ethyl acetate, butanol, etc. would be forming. So many byproducts are there. So you need a series of uh, uh, distillation columns to separate them. And it is essential also because this butadiene, whatever is there, that we primarily utilizing for the polymerization, polymerization to get the rubber, right? But if the impurities are there, they may be acting as inhibitors for the polymerization reactions, which is not good. That is the reason high purity butadiene is required, and then for that, separation of all byproducts or coproducts is very essential. Okay? Plant capacity is 70 to 100 tons per day. This is the flow chart here. So, from the ethanol storage, you take ethanol and do the vaporization using the uh, steam or heat exchangers, then send it to a tubular reactor which is the first reactor which also known as the acetaldehyde reactor because in this reactor only dehydrogenation of uh, uh, ethanol takes place to produce acetaldehyde. So, we have a tubular reactors like this, different tubes are there. And then these tubes are filled with a catalyst, right? Through these tubes, the uh, in these tubes only the catalyst is uh, fed, packed, and then through these uh, catalyst packed tubes, the reactant, which is vaporized uh, ethanol, is passing through. When vaporized ethanol pass through this uh, catalytic bed, then dehydrogenation of ethanol takes place and then you get a acetaldehyde. The temperature required is 260 to 290 degrees centigrade and then one atmospheric pressure is there. What catalyst we use here in these tubes? Usually chromium or molybdenum activated copper catalyst is used in general here to get the acetaldehyde, right? So, in order to control the temperature of the dehydrogenation reactor, there is a provision to supply the heat transfer fluids as well or the flue gases if you wanted to heat them, okay? Now, whatever the acetaldehyde that has been produced by the first reactor that would be mixed with ethanol vapors and then send it to the second reactor which is nothing but the butadiene reactor because in this reactor ethanol and acetaldehyde will react and then undergo dehydration reaction to produce butadiene. So, this reactor is also tubular reactor actually, different tubes are there of a certain length and diameter, length usually high like 6 meters, 5 meters something like that, diameters but would be some 7, 8 centimeters like that it would be having diameters. So, many number of tubes would be there in general like this. They would be clustered or bundled and then uh, arranged in a shell and then through these uh, uh, tubes only the reactant mixtures are passing through. Here in this case the tubes are packed with a tantala silica catalyst, right? So, when the reactant mixture of uh, acetaldehyde and ethanol interact with this uh, catalyst at 325 to 350 degrees centigrade, butadiene would be forming and be along with the butadiene some kind of impurities byproducts would also be there. In order to maintain the temperature of this reactor, here also to the shell of the uh, reactor Dautem uh, fluids are being provided so that to control the temperature, right? After the dehydration reaction, 
whatever the product mixture is there that is cooled and then passed through a series of distillation towers because n number of distillation towers are required. Let us say 2, 3 components are only there to be separated. So, we can show you know 3 distillation columns. In the first distillation column, highest volatile component would be separated out as top product. In the uh, second distillation column, intermediate uh, volatile component would be separated as the top column and then in the last column, you know, whichever is the lowest uh, volatile component is there that would be separated like three uh, distillation columns you can show. But now here, not only you need to separate uh, unreacted uh, acetaldehyde and ethanol, but also you have to separate CO, CO2, H2, ethylene, butylene, uh, ethyl, ether, ethyl acetate buta from the butadiene. So, so many units are required. So, rather showing so many units, we are simply writing series of distillation towers to purify butadiene. Whereas, the unreacted acetaldehyde and ethanol are there, they will be recycled back to the second reactor which is nothing but the butadiene reactor. Okay? Process is simple, but only thing that for the purification you need so many, uh, you know, unit operations or distillation columns because so many byproducts are present along with the butadiene. Process description 92 to 95 percent pure ethanol is vaporized and passed over dehydrogenation catalyst at 260 to 290 degree centigrade. This produces 90 to 94 percent yield of acetaldehyde on a 30 to 50 percent per pass basis. Then excess alcohol is mixed with acetaldehyde at uh, 3 to 1 ratio and fed as a liquid to a fixed bed converter containing tantalosilica catalyst. In this fixed bed reactor, pressure is essentially atmospheric but temperature is 325 to 350 degree centigrade and space velocity is usually 0.4 to 0.5 hour inverse which is on volume basis. This leads to conversion of 28 to 30 percent based on acetaldehyde with an ultimate yield of 75 percent because ultimate yield because two steps of reactions are there. Okay? Reaction gases contain numerous compounds in addition to unreacted ethanol and acetaldehyde. These are separated by series of fractionating columns with crude butadiene ultimately being purified using the similar separation purification steps as we have discussed in the dehydrogenation of butane process. Coming to the major engineering problems, reactor design is very essential. Fixed bed tubular reactors are used for both uh, acetaldehyde reactor as well as the butadiene reactor and these are designed with external heating using Dautam. Tubes which are present in the reactors having the diameter of only 7.5 centimeters but length of 6 meters and they contain 3 to 10 mesh size catalyst, right? So, the catalysts are uh, you know chromium or molybdenum activated copper in the acetaldehyde reactor whereas, uh, in the butadiene reactor it is tantala silica catalyst. Catalyst specifications for dehydrogenation chromium or molybdenum activated copper with no activity decay kind of catalyst are used. Whereas, for the dehydration reaction between ethanol and acetaldehyde to produce butadiene, you use tantala silica catalyst and that must be regenerated after every 100 to 150 hours by use of air to burn off carbon deposits at about 400 degrees centigrade. Process alternatives, oxidation of ethanol to acetaldehyde using air is also a fully commercialized process. Right? We, have, we have discussed only the one you know dehydrogenation and dehydration of ethanol process only, but there is another alternative which is nothing but oxidation of ethanol, but however, it is having disadvantage that in this process hydrogen cannot be recovered because in the oxidation of ethanol when you do to produce butadiene, hydrogen is being produced that cannot be recovered. But however, this is offset by not having to supply external heat for exothermic reaction of oxidation. Single step route is being sought to give butadiene directly from ethanol. However, for that purpose whatever the uh, required dehydrating catalyst is there. So, the correct dehydrating catalyst has not been developed until now. With this we complete the chapter on uh, synthetic chemicals production from C3N. 
C4 chemicals. References for today's lecture are provided here. Outlines of chemical technology by Dryden, edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve, fifth edition. Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology by Kirk and Atmar, fourth edition. Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Groggins, fifth edition. Thank you.